stormy weather. Hello everyone, in today's video we are experiencing a wonderful fall that is in Connecticut here. Pretty much every weekend where you really have free time and want to do stuff, you get weather that looks like this. Now there's been a couple really interesting updates in Flight Sim lately that have kind of, have kind of impacts on sort of our way of navigating these sort of situations. And that is the big changes with weather radar. Now the weather radar has always been kind of the fundamental component of Flight Sim. And we've had that basically since the first release and it's actually a pretty cool little tool for identifying where all the trouble and shenanigans are usually in front of you. But what they've done is they've actually made some slight little changes in order to make it a little bit easier for us to kind of tune what we wanted to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now and get us on the way here. I'm kind of get set up. We're going to get a little warning here. Ooh, yeah, it's cool off a little bit there. It's not that warm outside today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get us all pre-set up and all ready to go there. I'll go ahead and get us the navigation target. Now we're going to continue climbing here. It's got an alts warning, but let's be honest here. I'm just going to set it manually. And then I'm just going to move my head down here so you can appreciate this little Nexrad radar. Now, the interesting thing is uh, when I fly in the real world, I don't have a weather radar. I get the next rad because I have Tisby and Fisby, which comes in on my little tablet there, which is a pretty cool tool. So one of the things I can see is there's a big nasty clump of orange over here, which is pretty good. But we don't have a lot of knowledge of specifically where it is. Remember, in the real world, the next rad, which is uh, this little kind of satellite radar that gets beamed to us, is about 10, 12 minutes delayed, which means this big orange blob right here might actually be something that's coming a little bit later, or it could be something we're about to go flying into, um, information that we're probably going to want to know so we can ensure that our passengers have, you know, kind of a comfortable sort of flight sort of thing like that. Uh, let's see here. We definitely need to get ourselves a gentle bank here, but pop ourselves in the other direction. So unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, they actually did a really, really accurate job on the uh, GPS of this thing. I have to actually get us there in order to get us there. I know that sounds odd, but it actually makes sense when you think about it. So we're using a G3000 here, which is a fantastic tool. And again, I love how dark it is in here. This is so authentic, it makes me scared. And of course, if you have nice, good headphones and you're flying in the rain, you get a little trip drop, trip drop on top of your head. It's just so satisfying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my MFD here, which is this middle display. And notice I've got two panes I can select from. I've got the one on the left, which is my navigational pane, and I have the one on the right, which is my um, whatever I want to make it that day pane. Kind of it's a royal pane, you know what I mean. Uh, one of the things I want to do, though, is I would like to level off real quickly, though, once we get to 5,000 here. Ready? On my mark, get set, gonna miss it. <laughs> no joke. I think that's close enough. Let's go ahead and reduce the power a little bit. Yeah, 85 is fine. I'm not going to overheat the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my right pane down here. I've got all sorts of uh, fun little things here. Uh, we have the weather button, of course, and uh, that's a handy-dandy little button here because it's kind of going to get us our next weather here. If I press that button again, you'll notice there's also a button here that says Wix. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and uh, that's going to go ahead and uh, fire up our radar here. That's going to get this thing all booted up and ready to go. And you'll notice here that our weather radar at this current time is set to the off setting. You'll also notice, of course, that you know, we're not getting any display or anything. Now, when you first flip this sucker on, you're going to be like, all right, I want to see. So come down here with this Wix radar settings, hit that, and then you're going to press this button to engage it. Uh, when you engage it, what you're really doing is you're telling it to warm up. Uh, this is something you can actually do on the ground. But what we actually want it to do is we actually want it to go ahead and kind of give us an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to come to display mode, and I'm going to flip this to weather. And now, as soon as we do that, of course, uh, you're going to see your screen go boing, and it's going to get really terrifyingly intense really, really fast. The one thing I like is the line in the middle here. Now, one of the things I really appreciate is they actually simulate the sweep of that accurately. See this kind of like weird little burp, burp, burp it's doing right there? Super duper duper accurate for us. Now, we have two basic modes we can use this. Uh, first thing we can do is we can switch this to a vertical scan. Uh, the reason this is super cool is if we're looking for thunderstorms, I, I found one because it's always going to be the really, really tall thing that's in front of us generally. Now, if I want to just see what's directly in front of me, I can switch over to the horizontal mode and basically get a feel. Now, if I wanted to kind of dodge some of these shenanigans, uh, what I would do is I call up the ATC and say, hey, uh, you know, we've got a gap in the storm in about, what is it, eight miles, you know, request uh, whatever the specific heading is going to be so that we can basically kind of uh, zing through it without getting hosed here. Now, one of the changes that they made inside of this particular weather radar display, and by the way, if you wanted to, we could actually go to full display here so you can really see the fun in action here, is we actually have the ability to adjust the game. Now, you're probably sitting there going, why on earth would I do anything other than calibrate it? Let me show you. Let's go ahead and shut that off. I'm going to go reduce the gain all the way down. Now, you're probably saying, nicely done. Uh, all you've seemed to have achieved there is basically uh, shut the ra weather radar off. Yeah, I have. So let's go set it up to about 50% gain and see if we can pick up anything directly in front of us. Now, the goal here is all about tuning. Uh, we're trying to find that sweet spot where it's going to give us just the information that we need. Well, that looks pretty good. Now, let me tune it back just a little bit. Just a little bit back. I think we've just about got it perfect. Bingo. So now you're sitting there going, 
why'd you do that? Why don't you just leave it in the other mode? The reason I did that is now I know only where the most dangerous part of the precipitation is. And I can see very clearly directly ahead of me that I've got the big nastiest block of precipitation. So if I were to try to go between the precipitation, I know just by doing a quick glance here, this is gonna be the direction of travel that I'm most likely going to take. I'll probably come vector out this way and then probably follow along this side of the cloud so that I can reduce the intensity of the turbulence and bumpy bumps that I'm probably gonna get. Now, if I flip this back to calibrated mode, you see, oh, but I could have just used this mode because now I can just look and I can see where the big red blobs are. Why did I need to do the other mode? Because to me, as a pilot, I know it's raining outside. I, and that's obvious. Uh, the important thing is where I can get out of the way of it. So you can see by changing those two modes, we can actually tune our experience with this in order to have the best luck as far as finding exactly what it is we're trying to see of the weather that is directly in front of us, which is just one of those cool little things that I love the fact that they simulated that accurately. Now, some of you are probably like, well, this is cool. Um, what happens if you go over to the vertical mode? Well, this is what you're gonna see in the vertical mode now. Uh, the reason this doesn't really help us very much anymore is because unfortunately in this particular mode, we just know that there's something nasty in front of us. We'd have to turn the plane and wait till this disappeared to make it go away. We go back to calibrated mode, however, and it does its little sweep directly in front of us. There we go. You can now see that we've got a lot of nastiness at our level. The interesting thing though, is that I like this here, is that somehow we can change this we can go better. Now, another knob you have at the bottom is actually the range control knob. You'll notice if I crank this sucker, it'll actually allow me to adjust the range that we're actually looking. If I were to actually pull this all the way in here, this is a 10 nautical mile look. If I crank this all the way this way, this gives me a staggering 120 nautical miles of out in front of me. Now, by doing that, I can clearly see that when I get up into Massachusetts in my journey later on, um, we're good to go. There's gonna be no shenanigans or anything waiting for us, but that does nothing for me for the stuff that's right in front of me which is of course the stuff I'm about to go smacking into in a few moments. And it's gonna give me all sorts of uh, bumpity bumps kind of as I go. So as you can see, these uh, new weather radar functions are fantastic. Uh, they definitely give the co-pilot something to play with uh, during a journey here. Now, some people are like, um, is it okay to fly these planes through this kind of weather? Uh, yeah, for the most part it is. So there's no thunderstorms, it's just cold rain. But um, you know what the problem with cold rain is? Ice, enjoy.